Good morning and welcome to Facebook Live. I'm Cindy Speaker and I'm happy today to have with me Dave Miller and Dave is an attorney with Michael J. O'Connors and his soft and associates and he's going to talk with us. We're going to talk a little bit about motorcycle safety awareness in light of motorcycle safety month. So Dave, thanks for being with us today. Good morning, Cindy. It's my pleasure. Excellent. Well, Dave, this is Motorcycle Safety Awareness Month, and you I'm talking to you for two reasons. Number one, you handle a lot of motorcycle crash cases, but also because you're just um, a guy, I think, that knows a lot about this and can really help us in light of Motorcycle Safety Awareness Month. So first well, of all, yeah, go ahead. No, I said that's right. That's right. Okay. Uh, it's, a, it's a dual uh, interest that I have, uh, obviously, representing uh, motorcycle riders who are injured in, in crashes and also you know, even more importantly is avoiding those and, and ways that we can uh, avoid uh, or cut down on the number of crashes that happen every year in Pennsylvania. Well, tell us a little bit, a little bit about that. What are some precautions that we as car and truck drivers can, can be, you know, adhere to in order to prevent some of these motorcycle crashes that occur? Well, from a, from a, a vehicle operator standpoint, a truck driver or a, a car, um, you know, you, you got to understand, and, and I think most experienced drivers do, that motorcycles are different. Uh, obviously, uh, there's less protections available. So the, the biggest, uh, I think, safety precaution that, that you can take is just allow more room. Uh, that the old two-second rule for following, I think you want to expand that, maybe even the four seconds. Uh, we also understand that motorcycles are a little bit more maneuverable and can accelerate uh, much quicker. But they also have a more difficult time safely uh, decelerating, uh, if need be. Uh, so that that adds into the the reason to, to give them some extra time. Uh, first off, so they can react, and then secondly, so you can react to what they're doing. Yeah. Uh, and that's probably the biggest thing. Uh, the other is uh, if you drive around, you know, roads of Pennsylvania, uh, you'll see the signs. Uh, you know, keep an eye out. Motorcyclists are out. Yeah, and, and that a lot of the crashes that I see are simply because the, the, the uh, operator of the, the car or the truck never saw the motorcycle. Yeah, and that's simply a matter of perception because we're used to looking for bigger objects on the roadway, and uh, it's, it's just the way our eyes work and the way our minds process visual information is when when you're looking down a road that you're you're used to seeing a big truck coming down or, or a larger SUV, and then all of a sudden you have a smaller motorcycle. Your eyes yeah. just don't pick it up. It sort of gets yeah. blunted into the background, and you think you saw it. You think you saw it was clear. And next thing you do, you, you pull out in front of somebody on a motorcycle. And it's never a good situation. Yeah. Well, you know, it was when when I was um, when I was learning to drive when my dad was teaching me. Um, he taught me to be on high alert when we go into tunnels. And I've said to somebody else that I was talking to about this issue of noticing motorcycles is that we kind of have to be on high alert anytime we're around a motorcycle just to be sure because it's there's a whole different dynamic going on there yeah absolutely yeah, and that's a great way of thinking of it it's almost you know uh, your normal mentality when you're operating your car your vehicle uh, you know you should be aware anyway to yeah. avoid all the distractions that can otherwise happen but certainly when there's a motorcycle around you, do yeah. need, you, you need to heighten things up and really be on your top of your senses yeah. And if you're uncomfortable, just, you know, pull over or slow down and let them get far enough ahead of you and, and then uh, go on your way. But um, the reality is you do. Uh, all of your senses need to be heightened uh, when yeah. you're around a motorcycle. Yeah. And then there's the other. Now, I know a lot of times the, the crashes. And, and let me just ask you this. Do you see any um, statistics, statistical significance in terms of how often the crash is the, the driver, the car driver's fault? versus the motorcyclist. Cause we've all seen the motorcyclist that weaves in and out. And I think sometimes they get a bad rap, but I don't think it's always, you know, I don't know if it's even predominantly motorcyclist fault. Do and you I know? think you're right. I don't know the actual stats on that, on, on uh, fault analysis on motorcycle crashes, Yeah. but I would say, and I probably used to be a little bit swayed, uh, uh, as a, as a you know younger driver, when you would see the motorcycles kind of zipping in and out, and you're like, oh boy, here we go, you know, uh, a couple of miles down the road, you, you might be seeing something you don't want to see. But um, I think the reality is the majority of motorcycle riders are safe riders, yes. and they take the precautions that need to be taken. And just think about that, you know, just driving up to work today. You know, I had an hour hour long drive, and there was plenty of motorcycles out there. I didn't see any 
one zipping around. Yeah. I probably had about five to 10 motorcycles on the road and everyone was, was riding the bike the right way. So uh, I think they do get a bad rap. Uh, I think those yeah. types of drivers shouldn't have a motorcycle license because they're not only putting other drivers at risk, they're clearly putting, you know, taking their own life at risk as well, driving like that. Right. And they're, they're, you know, they're, they're breaking all the, basically breaking all the safety rules uh, that I can think of uh, on how to ride a, a motorcycle a safe way on the roads in Pennsylvania. And you want to, you want to do things, you know, you want to take every precaution you possibly can. Yeah, and talk a little bit about that, Dave, some of the precautions that drivers, and let me just say, I agree with you that I do think a lot of times motorcyclists get a bad rap because they are usually very safe drivers. Talk a little bit about some of those safety precautions that bikers should take and most bikers do take. Yeah, so I, I kind of break this down uh, into three different categories. Um, the first one is, is to know your motorcycle as the rider. Uh, you want to make sure you're, you understand how the bike works. Uh, you don't have to be a, an expert mechanic, but you know, have an understanding of, of uh, the basic operations of the motorcycle, what needs to be repaired, always keep it uh, tuned uh, properly, uh, make sure you're, you know, your, your brakes are in good working order. And, and a lot of these motorcycles also have some recalls where there's some, say, a steering mechanism needs to be uh, replaced. Make sure your, your bike is as in as perfect condition as it possibly can be before you get on the road. That's number yeah. one. Um, two is know yourself as a motorcycle rider. Uh, you know, they, just like drivers, they come in all shapes and sizes and skill ability. So uh, if you're not comfortable going on a highway, don't go on a highway. Uh, yeah. If you're not comfortable in, you know, rush hour traffic down, you know, 76 going down to Philadelphia where it's a lot of stop and go, try to avoid that. Um, and I think, uh, you know, one of the ways to really know yourself is to, and I will always, I will always um, talk about this program because I think it's excellent, is the Pennsylvania Motorcycle Safety Program, which is a free program that's put on by, you know, it's run by the state, but it's put on by experienced okay. drivers. So it's more like a volunteer situation. You're really getting, you know, person-to-person, uh, -person, you know, experienced accounts of what to do, how to operate. Uh, your bike, what to look out for. And it comes in all, there's a basic rider program and it goes all the way up to an advanced rider course for, you know, even someone oh, that's, that's been excellent. riding for 30 years. It's never a bad thing to, to yeah. revisit safety. Um, Where can they the, take that course? Are there places in your area? Yeah, they're offered all throughout Pennsylvania okay. at different times of the year. There's actually a winter classroom program as well. So you can get, if you're just looking to get a motorcycle license, you can do the classroom in the wintertime. And then you have to do the on-cycle training when they when they hold that in the spring or summertime. Yeah. But uh, the website, uh, you can sign up for alerts and they'll, they'll post when they're having those classes. And I think it's an excellent idea for anybody, no matter do how you experienced you are. Do you happen to know that website? Yeah, it's um, www.pamsp.com. So it's okay. pamotorcyclesafetyprogram.com. Excellent, um, excellent. And here's, here's a, uh, I was just actually reading up on this. I didn't realize this, but... If you take the basic rider course, um, A, uh, you don't have to go to the, uh, the driver license center to do the on-bike uh, training. So you, you save yourself a couple hours there. Okay. Uh, and also you get, uh, you're, you're eligible anyway for reduced motorcycle insurance rates. So there's oh. two huge benefits to that program. In addition to being a safer motorcycle rider, um, save yourself some time and maybe some money as well so yeah uh, I, I couldn't plug that program uh, any more strong so. sure sure you, you mentioned um let, let me ask you about the um wait i lost my place here let me see my notes oh yeah you need to back to number three yeah, yeah. <laughs> well sorry. let me get, let me go the insurance issues because you mentioned the insurance issues sure are there unique insurance issues yes there are in pennsylvania uh uh, motorcycle insurance is is different than than a, a automobile insurance policy in, in a one major way, and that is uh, what we call first party benefits are not available on a motorcycle insurance policy in Pennsylvania. So that means that uh, unlike on your auto policy, you don't have any medical coverage, and you don't have any wage loss coverage. Oh, so those are the okay. two big uh, items. Yeah. And those are immediate impact items as well if, if someone's involved in a crash and injured. Yeah. Because you need a way to pay for your medical bills. And you need a, you need a replacement uh, source of income if you're going to be out of work for a while. Yeah. Uh, and that's why it's very important for, 
for anybody riding a motorcycle to understand those risks and what is and is not provided in their uh, motorcycle insurance policy. Right. And then have other insurances available uh, to make up for those holes uh, that yeah. are by statute. There's there's nothing you can do about it uh, yeah. other than you know you can buy short-term disability policy and probably should have a long-term disability policy as well for uh, income replacement. Yeah. And then also obviously have health insurance or a way to pay for, for medical bills. Okay. And a lot of, you know, the way health insurance is these days, you know, you're going to have, most plans have pretty large co-pays or deductibles. So yeah. you know, yeah. keep that in the back of your mind as well, uh, because yeah. you've got to fill those gaps somehow and you don't want to have an unfortunate experience really be a, a life changing yeah. uh, financial detriment to yourself. Let me just make sure I understand that. So you're injured on a motorcycle, and what you're saying is that your own health insurance is what's going to come into play there, as yeah, opposed to a car where you would have benefits within the auto policy. Right. Your auto policy okay. will provide a medical payments benefit. The minimum in PA is 5000 You can always increase that up to you know as much as you want, as much as the insurance company is willing to sell yeah. you. And just as a side note, I always say that's the cheapest health insurance you'll ever purchase. So right. uh, just take a look at their auto policy as well. If you have $5,000 there, you know, if you get yeah. an ambulance ride and a visit in the ER, that's pretty much going to be used up. Yeah. Uh, and these days with, um, the, uh, you know, using the, yeah, the helicopters, uh, uh, maybe a little bit uh, overzealously, uh, again, that, that $5,000 coverage is used up very, very quickly. Yeah. Uh, where, you know, even if you bump it up to 10000 that gives you some added uh, treatment uh, post emergency room um, that can save you some money because now you're not paying anything out of pocket, depending on what your right. personal health insurance provides. For right, you. right. So. And, and what about motorcycle crashes? What are the most common causes that maybe you see? Uh, most common causes, and I'll split this up on liability analysis uh, reasons. Okay. But, uh, the, the one is uh, the motorcycle rider uh, not riding safe enough for conditions okay. where if we have a wet roadway or uh, you know, someone's out in the early spring and the roads haven't you know been swept up yet from the from the, the salt uh, things like that where yeah. uh, you just have to really know your roadway and, and, and drive safe so you know taking a turn too quickly uh, we see a lot of those where the you know the, the rider has to lay the bike down on the side because they can't stop in time yeah um, now on the, the flip side when we're looking at the other driver's fault, uh, most of the times I see it as a, a turn in front of the motorcycle, either pulling okay. out from a stop or making a left-hand turn across the other lane where they simply did not see the motorcycle right. or they didn't appreciate the, uh, they weren't able to uh, calculate, I guess, the, the time that the motorcycle uh, was going to get to that point. Um, just because again, it's, it's a matter of perception. Yeah. And like we talked me, before, you can either miss it completely or also you can't judge it properly because it's a smaller right. object. Let me ask you something about that with liability. If the car makes a turn in front of the motorcycle, but the motorcycle hits the car, I would guess there's a liability issue there because yes. probably both parties probably try to say it's the other party's fault. Yeah. And it doesn't, and even when it sounds very clear, like, yeah. oh, okay, well, the, the car's not supposed to turn to, in front of the bike, but right. it, it's never that simple. Um, it's always, well, how fast was the bike going? Um, you know, what, what could the rider have done differently? Could they have come to a yeah. stop or took, did some kind of avoidance maneuver? Uh, the reality is any, any vehicle that makes a left turn uh, across traffic has to do it safely, which means yeah. you have to allow enough time to complete your turn. So there's going to be liability there. The yeah. matter is... Depending on the, the, the crash analysis and the reconstruction yeah. that it often leads to that to do sort of a, a yeah. time and distance analysis and a, and a uh, there's also perception and reaction time on the part of the motorcycle rider as well. And we have to understand that we can't just slam on the brakes on a motorcycle. We have you know, there has to be enough time to bring the bike to a safe stop because if you slam yeah. on the brakes, you're just going to end up turning sideways right. and you might have to put your bike down on the side, which is right. not something anybody wants to do. Um, so it's a complex analysis. Every crash is complex when it comes to a motorcycle. Uh, that's why, you know, that points of impact are sometimes hard to figure yeah. out on a motorcycle as well, because you're not looking at a vehicle versus vehicle. Uh, you're looking at a much different object that has different uh, mechanics and different physics behind it. Yeah. 
not to jump ahead, but with the motorcyclists, so with these types of liability issues, and we were talking about crash analysis and speed and all of this, I mean, really, that's, that is a reason for somebody that is a biker in a situation like that to get a lawyer involved, because the average person is not going to know where to go to get a complex crash analysis. Talk, yeah, can you talk a little bit about, because I know, I know you had talked about, I think you, have, you brought in a new case last week that was a serious crash. I know you can't talk about that, but just generally speaking, talk a little bit about what types of things you do in those situations in terms of crack, crash analysis. What kinds of experts do you have to get involved in that, those situations? Well, yeah, there we use uh, uh, experts to do the uh, reconstruction for us. Okay. Uh, now, the state police, and I believe every state police or most state police throughout the country have their own crash analysis teams. Okay. Where in, in severe situations, they'll they'll come around with their equipment, do a, a scan, uh, take a look at all the markings on the roadway, take photographs, uh, take statements from all the witnesses, uh, the parties involved, obviously, but. Uh, you know, we don't always agree with that, uh, or, or we want an independent look at it. Uh, you know, it's nothing against them. They do an excellent job at the state police, yeah. but it's always good to have different perspectives on things. Sure. Or maybe they miss something in the roadway that, that, you know, one small little yaw mark or, or, uh, uh, or skid mark in the roadway can mean all the difference in, in a crash analysis. Okay. Um, uh, so what, that's what we would do. We would, you know, if they give us a call soon after a crash. Uh, obviously, we'd reach out to the state police or whatever police department's doing the uh, uh, the workup or the report and the crash analysis. But uh, if need be, we'll get our folks out there as well uh, while the, the markings are fresh, while people's memories are fresh. And um, it's important. It's very important. I think uh, the witnesses are, are critical um, because there's times where it, it's if it's a party against a party, a uh, motorcycle rider versus a, a truck or a car, they're each going to have their own perceptions of what happened. Right. Uh, so if you have multiple witnesses who can add into the story, then it's easier to piece it all together. Sure. And hopefully it all makes sense with what we see on the roadway and, and yeah. you know, where the final positions of the, the vehicles were as well. So it's, as you can see, uh, that was a lot of words. I hope that came across. It's a very complex oh, yeah. analysis. I mean, it's, it's sure. forces. I mean, it's all the stuff that maybe we took back in high school that we thought we'd never use again. And right. most people don't in their everyday life, which is why we yeah. have to bring these experts in. Yeah, yeah. Just to go back, was there anything else in terms of crashes, types of crashes that you see? Um, I think that's it. But I wanted to go back to that first one. Um, the, the third point I wanted to make on on uh, being safe is, is yes. for the motorcycle rider to understand the risks that are there. And most motorcycle riders are also vehicle operators, so I think they have an understanding of that. But I, you know, I think going to one of those uh, PA motorcycle safety program courses is, is yeah that five-hour classroom will will go over all those types of things. A lot of it's common sense stuff, but it's never never a bad thing to keep it fresh in your mind. Right, absolutely. Dave, if someone has specific questions, how can they reach you guys? Well, they can get us uh, go to our website at www.oconnorlaw.com or give us a call at 1-800-518-4529. Excellent. Anything else you want to add before we go today, Dave? Uh, ride safety. Yeah, Be safe out there, everybody. There you go. Well, thanks, everybody, for, for being here today. If you have questions or comments, you can put them right in, in the comments section on this page. And Dave, thank you again for being here. Thank you, Cindy.